My name is David Calvo, and I'm the Director of Family and Community Engagement at CABE, the California Association for Bilingual Education. And today, we are at CABE Conference 2023, and I'm so fortunate to have hey. run into Dr. Margarita Machado Casas. Hey. Thank you so much for joining Muchas us. Gracias, David. Thank you so much for having me. You had such an inspirational message earlier today. Can you share with our audience just a few highlights from it? Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, you know, the message and the theme of this year's CABE conference is so amazing and so telling. We've spent the last several years on a computer and this is our first year back. Yeah. And what an amazing way then to really focus on our testimonials, because I think that the pandemic probably did something to all of us. And I think for me specifically, it really made me think about who I am, what do I represent, where do I come from, what does it mean to be who I am as an Af Latinegra, Afro-Latina, um, while running one of the largest bilingual programs in the state of California, credential programs in the state of California, and understanding that there's not enough representation for a lot of us. And so what I was wanting to do is to take a really deep dive into my identity. Así como le decimos calzón pelado, right? Really just raw tour of what it means, that, like what hybridity means yeah. in migration. And so I talk about me coming in as a teenager, um, coming from Bluefields, Nicaragua, which is in you know, Bluefields, Nicaragua is, is black. We're Creole. We, you know, there's also Garifuna, there's also Misquito. We're Afro-Indigenous. And growing up in an environment and in a culture where Spanish was not necessarily the first language, where we all look different, where there are people that were very dark and very light, they were all black, Afro-Indigenous. And so, and then coming through school here, migrating, right, crossing the border and, and all the trauma that that brings, but then coming here and all of a sudden being expected to erase that and becoming something else and being forced to, you know, to really en enact and practice what I call the pedagogy of the chameleon, which is this ability to move in and out of spaces because you're required to, because you feel like if you're this or you're that, or you do this or you're that, you're not gonna be counted uh, or, or accepted. And then going all the way to college um, as an undocumented student and really digging really deep into this term of being oculto, being hidden, and the danger of invisibility, especially when invisibility happens in a classroom. And in order to do that, what I wanted to do is to really, I wanted people to feel and remember what it was like walking into a classroom. The fear, the smell, you know, all of that that is so important, like that is so critical. That teacher that's standing there smiling or maybe the teacher was not smiling, what happened? But I wanted them to connect to that, 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 that idea of holding each other's hand, but also letting go of the hand of the person that took you there. Because that's really what it takes to go back and put yourself either in somebody else's shoes or in a situation that is similar to what identity, losing identity looks like. And, um, and then from there, um, what I did was just dig into my own identity, right? As a black Latina and all the ways in which I had to unpack myself to fit other spaces. And I wanted folks to really think about the idea of holding each other's hand, holding your student's hand, your colleague's hand, administrator's hands, making each other accountable in this recognition of identity and authenticity of, of just be who you truly are. Because if we don't know that, then our experiences as students in schools will be much more difficult. And there's tons of research around that, right? Yes. But it still happens. And so I, what I wanted to is just, it was, it was for me, but it was also for other people who have been there for me. And I just wanted to be as raw as possible because that's what it is. And, um, and so that's, that's what it was about. And leave, leave everyone with the message that we have to stop this practice of invisibility we have to stop enacting the discourse of, you know, not being seen. And we have to hold each other's hand and push each other to that place, that place where you feel you belong, even if you're uncomfortable, even if it makes you feel uneasy.
is their identity. Um, and I think that that's where I kind of wanted to go. And also, you know, be, for folks to become aware that just because you don't look a certain way doesn't mean, you know, anything. Identity is deep. Sure. And, um, and identity is everywhere. And I, and so many times, David, that I, people have said, oh, no, she's not a real, she, she says she's black, but she's not black. Things like that, that I think that we need to stop that. Yes. Those are things that need to stop because um, nobody has the right to tell anybody who they are. And certainly a teacher should never make those assumptions um, because that then causes trauma. And so that's what it was about. Right. Um, and then just a calling to our field as bilingual educators to be much more inclusive of the differences between inside of differences. Right? The differences yeah. inside of differences. Just because I'm from Nicaragua, it doesn't mean that everyone from Nicaragua thinks like me or looks like me. And, you know, you're Cubano, doesn't mean that everybody eats, you know, whatever, right? right? right Un mojito right, right. todo mundo. <laughs> no, mojito se hace diferente en different places. Yeah, hay, yeah, hay fresco yeah. de caña. You know what I mean? There's sure, just so sure. much. And so that's kind of what I wanted us to, to, to be aware of as a field, that we're failing by not making sure that that is at the forefront. Margarita, I'm hearing in your message, mm -hmm. inclusion. Sí. How can we make our spaces more inclusive? I think that, you know, I think that what we need to do is make sure that we stop making assumptions about who folks are. I think that as a field, that should be the first thing before literacy, before math is who are you? Where do you come from? Who do you want to be? Who do you, you know, what is that? And then use that space as a tool for educators to then enter curriculum. I think we have to be more inclusive of folks like myself and other folks that come from spaces of hybridity. I don't know anybody that's 100% pure. Whatever. <laughs> whatever that means. Yeah, whatever that means. <laughs> We're all, really, we come from a space of hybridity. So we cannot make assumptions around that, right? And we have to be, and I think ethnic studies is probably a place that's, you know, it's really moving towards that. But as bilingual educators, I feel like we need to do a better job in making sure that we include languages, varieties of languages, all kinds of things that are in what we call diversity. Because if you look around, even when we walk around here, you'll see a lot of stuff in Spanish. Yes. And I want you to count how many things in other languages, especially not, not indigenous much. Not much. and Afro-Indigenous languages. Mm -hmm. Very little. So that's a calling for all of us. Our students can become the writers of their lives, of their realities, of their cultures. And that's what we need to promote as educators, the ability for them to see themselves on the board. All right. So as we think about the bilingual education space there's yeah. there's all of these challenges that we're still trying to yeah. contend with yeah what is your call to action to our viewers yeah. how can we make the space better so i think there's there's a couple i think um, from the space of um my current work as the director or the the chair of the dual language and english learner education department and we train future teachers i have to tell you that as a field we're not doing a good job in teaching teachers how to how to include, how to be more inclusive, to include different identities, different languages. And I think we need to do a better job. I think that for educators, it should start, like we need to have programs that are much more inclusive than what we are now. And I tell you my program, we're mostly 97% Latinos. We have a Mandarin program, we have other programs, but their populations are very small. So, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing to promote other programs? And then within that, what about that Mandarin culture are we including? Right. Right. And who are we leaving out? Oh. And I think that that is where we have to really engage in dialogue, because if we want our educators to be out there to do this, to include our students, to do all these things that were just talked about, we have to look at our current teacher credential programs. And so number one is a calling for legislators, for educators, for professors university administration to really think about what this what it means inclusivity means 
and provide the resources necessary for programs to do what they have to do so we can do what we want to do, which is increase the pipeline of all teachers, right? Yes. And so I think that's one thing. The other one is a calling for all educators to hold each other's hand in this process of diversity, identity. And if you ever see that there is a colleague that's struggling with that, or maybe is closeted, not out with who they are. Authenticity. Authenticity. Then we should be able to hold their hand. And they should be able to walk out how they want to, when they want to. But they just need to know that they have a hand. That's it. And I think that if we are to do that and really practice and enact empathy as educators towards our students and towards everyone, we would have a way better world. Margarita, thank you for sharing these thoughts. As That's we it. bring this interview to a close, do you have any final words you'd like to share with our audience? I just want everyone to remember that bilingualism, multilingualism is key. And that we have to continue to be bilingual, ready to mingle from Sunday to Domingo, okay? Hashtag real talk. Peace. <laughs> thank you so much Gracias. for joining us. <laughs> Gracias. David.